Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Earlier today, I received an email asking a question about how to set up a passing system for a sports game, something like this. So if you look here, I've got uh, seven players and a ball. The ball is actually under a player right now. And if I grab out an Xbox controller, I can point in a direction, and you see the red line just appear, showing which way I'm pointing. And then the character that it's going to pass to just gets highlighted in green. I can hit A to pass, and the ball just goes to that person. Can't do anything while the ball is in motion, like that, nothing happens. But once it re you know, gets received, I can pass it again. So I'm going to show you how to set this up. It's actually a pretty simple system. There are two scripts here. The first one's just a ball, and if you look right here, the ball class is actually totally empty. I just use it to find the ball. Now there's the passing script, and this does all the work. And each one of these players, they don't have a normal player script with motion and everything. They just have this one single passing script for now. So let's see what this looks like. The first thing you'll notice is that I have a collection right here of all other players. And I just do uh, find objects of type, and I use a link filter here to filter out this, this object so that each player knows about all the other players in their array, and that array doesn't have themselves in it. Then I just cache the ball. Like I said, I just use this script to find the ball. I thought about putting some code there, but ended up not needing anything. So in the update of this script, all I do is check to see if I have a ball. So only one player will have the ball. And I'm actually kind of cheating here on how I do that. I just look to see if they have a child count greater than zero, because I'm putting the ball as a child of the player that has, the, has it. So if it's the character with the ball, assuming one has the ball, we get the horizontal and vertical axis values which just map up to my controller's um, stick right there. And then we get the direction. So I just take the horizontal and vertical, pass them in as X and Z, leave Y to zero, and get a new vector. Then I'm drawing out that ray. So that's that red line. Remember, if you see um, when I press it in here, if, if I do this, that red line right there is the ray that you're seeing in this call on line 24. Next, I find the target player, and then I do an update on the renderers. So this update renderers is just making the target green. That's literally all it does. It makes the target green and makes the other things white. It's a terribly inefficient way to do it, but um, it's just a temporary placeholder so you can see which character was going to get the ball. Now let's look at the find player in direction script, because this is kind of the important part. And I did this two different ways. There's a link version right here, and then a non-link version right here. It's just kind of why I like link, although this is going to generate a little bit of garbage. In my case, I don't really care. So here, what I do is I look at all the other players, and I order them by the angle, distant, or the angle from the direction to the ball and the, ang and the direction to that player. So imagine like the direction... Um, the direction the ball is facing in is right here. The direction to the player is right here. I'm going to get this angle that's right in between them. I should probably put my hands like this, right? So if the direction to the the ball or the direction I'm pointing the controller is like this, and the direction to the player is like this, I'm going to get this this difference right here in the middle as the angle. And I go through and get the angle of each of them, and then find the one with the smallest angle, and then that is the um, the player that I want to target. That's the one with the smallest angle difference between where I'm pointing and where it is. And I just return that back out. So let's see, right, I'm getting the target player here. And then in, again, in update renderers, like I said, I just go through, I set the target one to green, go through all the other ones except for the target and set them to white. Pretty boring. Um, but the other part that's cool is in pass right here. So what is this, line 29, I check to see if it's if they have a target, and if they do, and they press fire right here on 31, we pass the ball. And to pass the ball, we just set the direction. So we take the, uh, we get the direction to the player. And it's important to note here that when I get the direction to the player, I use the ball's position, not the player's position, because we're going to be adding force to the ball itself. We want the ball to move in the right direction. We don't necessarily have the ball and the player at the exact same point. So we want to move the ball towards the player, not the passing player towards the player. So we're using the ball as that source. 
So we get that direction. I set the parent to null just to make it not a child of the thing anymore so I can't pass. Um, I turn kinematic off on the ball and I add force in that direction. And here I just have a variable called pass force that I set to about 900 and that seemed like a good value. I think you'd want to adjust this, maybe have it variable or something. Um, the last part of this though is catching the ball. So if I scroll down all the way to the bottom, I've just got an on trigger enter and I check to see if, if it's a ball. So if the ball comes to the player and enters their collider area, we set the velocity to zero, just make it kinematic and then set the ball as a child of that transformer of that player. So this whole thing, like I said, it's not the cleanest, but it's a relatively simple problem and simple solution. Um, and again, I have a non-link version of how we do this filter right here. It's just a lot more code and it doesn't really make a big difference, at least not in this demo case. But we're basically doing the same thing, finding the player with the lowest angle and then returning that. So if you want to do a passing game, I'd recommend going with something like this. Maybe optimize a little bit so that you're not um, constantly doing these checks, especially if you're not trying to pass. Perhaps only do the actual uh, angle calculations when the player presses the button and is going to pass. I, I did it here because I, earlier because I want to show where it's going to pass to and just make it a little bit more visual for this demo. But yeah, we definitely optimize it a bit. So I hope this is helpful. I'll put the project source up so anybody that wants to check it out can just download it and try it out themselves. And if you have questions like this, um, you know, feel free to join my email list. Just hop onto the site at unity3d.college and you'll get a little pop-up you can join up. Um, or just comment below. And uh, again, if you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.